start a message this morning that we're going to finish on April the, well, Passover is April the 5th to the 13th, and we're going to stay on this, going to stay on this until you get it, till we all pass over together into happy new you. Happy new you. Breakthrough. Like, like Ashton was saying, I, I, I thought you were going to preach my message. That's okay. <laughs> Anyway, I love you, and I'm going to focus on this. I'm going to focus on this. And there's some things I'd like you to write down. I can't make you write them down any more than I can make you read the Bible through in a year. Although we try it every year. And we can mention it again every year. I'm starting this today and going until the middle of April. But Paul Wilson is doing something next Sunday. I encourage you, get your friends to come out too. This this Paul and Shirley have been the start of last year sucked. Everybody say sucked. sucked. But the end of the year. <laughs> no, but you need to know that there's an end. The bend in the road is not the end in the road. It's just a bend. What do you do when you ride a motorcycle? Lean in. Lean into those curves, baby. You can make it. Okay. Okay. I want you to write this down. Second Corinthians 5, 7. You probably heard it before. Faith is not moved by what it sees or affected by what it feels. Faith is not moved by what it sees or affected by what it feels. If you get these down in your spirit, you'll conquer anything. You know, I was thinking about this friend that I I knew years ago and he heard Kenneth E. Hagin preaching the message on healing, he had a tumor under his arm, along his rib cage. He spoke to it every single day for a year. One day when he was showering, it fell off in the shower. Don't stop believing. Just because you don't see it. Write this one down. Faith is not blind. It's a sight of a higher kind. Faith is not blind, it's a sight of a higher kind. Ashton just got her voice back. You just got your voice back, didn't you? We're glad you got it back. Come on. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> anyway, okay, write this one down. Flesh is occupied by the calendar. Faith doesn't care. Flesh is occupied by the calendar. It's taking so long, God. Are you going anywhere? I keep asking that. Are you going anywhere? We're here to train, training for reigning during the millennium. Whatever you're going through now is for future training. You're going to rule and reign with him, and you're not going to get a chance to develop your faith there. This is your, this is your opportunity here. And so again, you, you, we're, we're learning something. We're, we're not occupied by the calendar. We don't care about the calendar. How about this one? Weak faith looks at the circumstances or examines the circumstances. Strong faith examines the promises, looks at the promises. Through these exceeding great and precious promises, think about it. He said that through these exceeding great and precious promises, you can partake of his divine nature and escape the corruption that's in the world through lust. I mean, I see people on Facebook all the time that, well, I don't go there all the time anymore. I've been healed. But, but they, they have a real problem with prosperity. If you just read Genesis 13 too, it says that Abraham was very rich. And then it doesn't say spiritually. It says it was silver and gold and camels and BMWs. And, 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 but he didn't have a problem with it because if you read Hebrews 11, it says that he had here no continuing city and he kept everything with an open hand. Whenever God needed something, he was there to do it, right. right? So you need to prosper. I tried poverty. It sucks, man. Like I say every time, I've had hamburger helping. It doesn't help. I've had craft dinner every way that you can possibly cook it. I used to go into the to the supermarket and stick my arm in the in the in behind the in behind the craft dinner and just 
put as many as I could down into the... And then I'd go home, fry up some pep peppers and onions and do whatever else I had. But now every now and again, once a year or so, I'll eat it because I like it. But back then, it wasn't a matter of, do you like this? Are you enjoying this? No, but I have to buy drugs. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Okay, weak faith looks at the circumstances or examines the circumstances. Strong faith looks at the promises. And this is one that God gave me for, for Kim when she was doing some plumbing last week or something. <laughs> you and your boyfriend look good, good together, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're just saying. <laughs> Mind your business, Gary. Okay, okay. I said this, adver ad adversity is nothing more than your enemy's reaction to your forward progress. Adversity is nothing more in his reaction, to your forward progress. So again, if you're going through things, you should be. You're going through things, though. You're going through the valley of the shadow of death. You're not camping out there. You're not building a house there. You're going through there. He didn't say you wouldn't, but he said, I prepare a table before you in the presence of my enemies. Mephibosheth was all about that in 2 Samuel 4 and chapter 9, too. Uh, God took him through, and he had nothing to do with it. Okay, so now, let's go next. Uh -huh. This is the word for the year that we're in right now. This is what God said. Get ready to pass over, says the Lord, from what has been to what will be. This past year, I've been preparing you by my word, and you've been preparing the church for the passing over, a releasing, a letting go, an exodus of what has been good in me to something greater in me. You're doing what you know to do. Keep your eyes fixed on the straightaway, not on anyone else in the race or nor any distractions. You've been prepared and readied by my spirit, groomed and trained. Mm. Hallelujah. Groomed and trained for this new and final stretch. The final stretch. Yes, the home stretch. Hebrews 12 says, you're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses cheering you on. So keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the pioneer, the protector, the protector. That's why I love that song, the protector. Maybe we can get that later. We'll try. I have, I have influence. <laughs> the pioneer and the protector of your faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured hardship he endured the hardship and is now one of the ones cheering you on to win. A fixing, a focusing on the finished line. The prize on me getting ready for you, your church and your ministry to pass over into the winner's circle. By the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus, says the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of grace. He's taking you over this year. All you got to do is listen. All you got to do is trust, prepare, do do what do what we're, you're going to hear over the next few months, and I promise you, I'll give you a money back guarantee. You'll get across into another place, into another realm in God. Exodus three nineteen. We're going to look at that for a moment. It's funny because Moses is given a plan that he knows won't work. He says, "Moses, I got a plan for you, and it's not going to work." <laughs> No, but that you, you could explain the last couple of years like that too. You, 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 there's plans you can try, but they're not going to work. But God already knew they weren't going to work, but he's using them to bring restoration to you. Not only restoration to you, but in, in the Hebrew, uh, in, 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 in Pharaoh's land in Egypt, it was 430 years of back wages had, had to come to them. In your life, it's the wealth of the wicked is laid up in store for the just. The end time harvest costs money. And how's, how's he going to get it to you? I don't know, but I know this. He's going to get it to you. It won't be multi-level marketing or any of the goofy stuff people have tried over the years, but it, it'll be God and you trust him. You trust him. So what else does he say here? 
He said, I'll stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, and I will do in the midst thereof, and afterwards he will let you go. And I will give the people favor, and look at this, I'll give the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And when you go, you'll not, you'll not come out empty. Restoration of everything that's been stolen. Many have given up on God. Many have given up on his seasons, but his seasons are as important as his callings. To everything there is a season, to every purpose under heaven. Amen. Exodus 4, 21. It says, God will harden Pharaoh's heart. I'm here to tell you that God doesn't harden anybody's heart or take away your free will, your free choice. But if you look at this closely, he didn't harden Pharaoh's heart. He simply withheld his favor, pulled back with his grace. That's it. That's it. And only after Pharaoh had just, like he was in total rebellion. How about Romans one twenty four when it talks about uh, the day we're living in? A hardened heart, simply withdrawing favor. That's all it is. When God lifts off his restraining hand, he lets them have full expression of their sinful and shameful desires. I read that again. When God lifts off his restraining hand, and he'll let them have full expression of their sinful and shameful desires. They'll, then they'll be given over to moral depravity. But it wasn't his will. He's not willing that any should perish. So when people say, well, God heard in Pharaoh's heart, how could he possibly do that? How could he possibly take somebody's free will and snatch it from them? I mean, that, that's what caused Adam and Eve to sin. They were given a free will, and God, God didn't make them like angels that do his bidding. He made you so that if you're going to love him, you're going to choose to. If you're going to obey him, it's going to be your, be your decision. He's long-suffering. You ever see somebody running away from God and rebelling, and you're thinking, how long are they going to get away with this? Oh, he's long-suffering. Long-suffering with people. His grace I'm telling you, so when Pharaoh got to this point, he, he got himself in his own mess, that's all. Okay, Exodus chapter 6, 6 to 9. Now in chapter 6, like maybe we can do it when we get there. The Seder meal is in chapter 6. The four cups of redemption are there in chapter 6. But let's take a look at what God said he was going to do here. He said, I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. I will rid you out of their bondage. I will redeem you with a stretch forth, a forth arm and with great judgments. I will take you for me and I will be a God unto you and you shall be my people. I'll remove the burdens of Egypt from you. And I will bring you in. See, it's one thing to bring you up, but it's another thing to bring in. <laughs> no, we've all been brought out of what mess we were in, but he didn't want to leave you out there. You know, life is a little better now, or maybe not at all. He said, if you'll come with me, I'll bring you in. I'll bring you into exceeding great and precious promises. I'll bring you into greater is he that's in you than he that's in your circumstances. I'll bring you into you're an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. I'll bring you into Romans 8, 19, that, that, that you're my son and, and, and you're manifesting that sonship in the earth. That's the ultimate for us. That's the ultimate for us that we will manifest his sonship. How can that be? I don't know. I, I know that I can't produce it, but I can believe it. It's like healing. We read through the book of Acts and think, look at all the healing. No one healed anybody. It's really the acts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was working through people. Even in, it says in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God was with him. It's not your responsibility to get somebody healed. It's your responsibility to pray for them. 
It's not your responsibility to get somebody saved. You know, you can, you can, it's kind of like what the Lord said to me a, a few, uh, maybe two months ago, and, and I shared it with people. Nancy doesn't like me sharing it, but, but she's over there and I'm over here looking this way. <laughs> no, but when I read about the donkey carrying Jesus into Jerusalem, I realized that the donkey was carrying the word of God, right? And so then the Lord said to me, 31 years ago, you were the ass. I'm using his words for me. You were the ass that brought the word into this city. And, and then you brought all of the, the apostles that were around at the time, some of the best preachers that ever lived, pre preached from our pulpits. And, and, and the Lord said, your responsibility was to do that. What the people did with the word of God was up to them. I said, God, they mostly rejected it. He said, that, so they did with me. He said, I preached and fed thousands of people, but there was only 120 in the upper room. So it's not about numbers. It's about you doing your job. You just do your job. You just take the word to people. How they respond to it, it's up to them. You, you know, like somebody said, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Sometimes you can't even make them think. Anyway. Exodus 6, 6 to 8. So, so those are the I wills that he said, I will bring you in. Exodus 7 and verse 1. Oh, this could take us places here. The Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. See, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. See, you went from zero to hero. See, can you see? The truth is you are a son of God, and therefore you are a, oh, boy, Gary. Let's go to John 10, 13. no, where can we go with this? You're not an ordinary human, that's for sure. You have a treasure in an earthen vessel. And it's not natural muscle that's going to win your victory. But let's go to John 10, 34, because I know that's a good one. It'll lead us over into Psalm 82. Because it'll drive religious people crazy. No, it will, because they think we're bragging on ourselves. No, no, we're humility. You know, he opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble Humility simply receives what somebody else has done. Humility is a meek and lowly. Humility is, I got nothing to brag about except him. Yeah. And I'm going to brag about him every chance I get. But it's not me doing the work. It's kind of like in Acts chapter 20, 24. You know, Paul the Apostle said, he said, I don't count my life dear unto myself. The key word there is self. <laughs> He said, it's not about me. Therefore, I don't take the blame when things go bad, and I don't take the credit when things go good. That ought to make everybody happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. All I got to do is walk with him, trust him. Do, sec do Matthew 6, 33. Trust in him with all my heart. Come on, follow him, his method of operation. Seek first. I was going to go back to that. Seek first. You mean once? No, I mean every day. He's first. He's first. Seek first his kingdom, his method of operation, and all of the things that the Gentiles are looking for, they'll simply be added onto you. And here's the key. Here's, here's what sounds like an impossibility. Take no thought for tomorrow. Well, what are we gonna do? He said, take no thought for tomorrow. Try that. But you can do it. Because if you're not controlling your thought life, who is? It's a discipline. It's like getting rid of the ants, the automatic negative thoughts. So you got to get rid of those. You, I, I can choose what I think about. I can choose what I think about. Even when I'm watching a TV or something, a movie or something, I realize that what I'm doing is watching somebody, somebody do something more exciting than me. 
and doing something freer than me. And, but it's, it's just futility to watch those things, really. Because, because while I'm watching those, real life is going by my door. I'm not saying you shouldn't have enter- entertainment, but I'm saying I need to watch myself that I'm not li- letting somebody else live my life or yeah. inspiring me to do nothing. Amen. Okay. Well, that went over well. That's good. Okay, John 10, 34. I, I keep bringing my glasses and I keep coming up here without them, so I might as well continue. Okay. Um, let's, let's begin in verse 29. My Father, which gave them unto me, is greater than you all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. This is what he said now. This is what he said that got him into trouble. I and my father are one. Aren't you a son of God? Be careful who you tell that to. (laughs) He said, and and they took up stones to stone him. (laughs) Jesus answered them and said, many good works... Have I showed to you from my father? Which of these are you willing to stone me? The Jews answered him and said, For a good work we stone you not, but for blasphemy. And because that you, being a man, make yourself God. Jesus said unto them, Is not it written in your law? I said you are God's. And again, Romans 8, 19, all of creation waiting for us to manifest. And we're not going to struggle to make it. We're just going to follow him right into it. We're going to follow him right into it. He's going to do it. And the world's going to be astounded. Because he has the last say. He has the last say. The pandemic wasn't the last day. Church is shrinking. He said, he said, they turned away from me because they didn't understand my seasons. So they looked for reasons. Why has God failed me? He hasn't. I need to recognize the season I'm in. I'm in winter right now in Nova Scotia. God help me. <laughs> no, I, you know, I like to tell you, I don't like winter. I didn't like it before when I was out skiing and stuff. I really don't like it now. I like three seasons here. What are you saying? I'm saying you have seasons in your life that you don't like. But And even though it doesn't look like anything is going on, you know, next February and March, the sap starts coming up out of the trees, and they're going to make maple syrup, and they're going to pour it on my pancakes. Like, no, but things are always working. Just because you can't see them, roots are going deeper. You're getting stronger. So don't be moved by what you see. We walk by faith and not by sight. Faith in him to do what he said he was going to do. Amen. So he said, it's written in your law, are you not gods? He said, if, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, I blaspheme because I am a son of God. And as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the who? Blasphemy. I don't think so. God said it. But let's go to, let's go over to, um, let's go to Psalm, I I think it's Psalm 82. Yes? You're there ahead of me. Hmm. Hmm. I'm in Exodus again. That won't work. Ah. Psalm 82. Now, before we read this, think about it. The blueprint for man is God. (laughs) He didn't make a mannequin. He had a mannequin in front of him, and he breathed in his life. (sighs) And then in Acts 20, 20, uh, John 20, 20, when he met the disciples, he said, receive the Holy Ghost, and it's emphoseo in the Greek. It means he inflated, put the word back in them, and they were born again at that moment. Then he said, Luke... At 2449, tarry in Jerusalem until you're clothed in power from one high. Two different things had to happen. 
two things will happen with you this year. You'll be endued with, if you're not born again, you will be, but I know, I know you all are, but you're going to be endued with power from on high, yes. clothed upon, yes. clothed upon. And I, how do I do that? Just lift up your arms and slide, slide it on, you know. Just. No, but he says that in Colossians. Put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man, renewed in the knowledge of the image of him that created us. There's neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarians, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all. And where? In all. Put on as the elect of God, holy and beloved. I like that part too. He just doesn't say you bunch of scumbags. <laughs> like religion thinks, I'm just so unworthy. No, he said you're holy and beloved. Don't say you're unworthy. When he, when he calls you holy and beloved, you better make sure you call yourself that. Holy and beloved. Wow. And then he talked about forbearing and forgiving one another. Okay, we can do that. Even as Christ forgave. So this is the thing that, and Ashton brought that out too, I think, in praise and worship. You know, you need to make sure that you let everybody go. If there's somebody that you're holding something against, this year you need to let it go. Let go of the past. Past hurts is the big one. You can't live life driving in the rearview mirror. It's this big. The windshield is this big. Watch where you're going. And just deal with what's in front of you. He didn't even say think about tomorrow. He said take no thought for tomorrow. So all you got to do is deal with what's in front of me today. Just, just for today. Just for today. Hallelujah. So Adam was just like him, you know. You wouldn't, if, 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 if Adam had to come walking along and God came walking along, you wouldn't have known the difference. He looked just like Jesus, the first Adam. Looked just like the second Adam. I'm not making this up. It's in your book. Okay. Sons of the Most High. Let's read uh, Psalm 82. God stands in the congregation of the mighty and judges among the gods. Hmm. Well, we know angels aren't God, but you were created a little lower than Elohim. Come on. But he crowned you with glory and honor. He didn't, you didn't crown yourself. He crowned you with glory and honor. The, the angels were saying, what is this man? What's this man that you're mindful of him or the son of a man? Who is this, who is this creation? Didn't understand it. And even now it says that they, it, 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 one of the translations says they're on tiptoes looking to see what's going to happen next. <laughs> they're waiting. All of creation is waiting for a manifestation of the sons of God. And like I said about the devil, he's, he's got a retirement plan. He's going to retire on the lake of fire. Or he'll be tormented day and night forever. So remind him of his, when he reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. Hey, 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 come here. I want to talk to you. Don't go away yet. I want to say this to you. You're going to retire in a lake of fire. You're going to be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I'm not coming to your funeral because you're not that important to me. I can't believe you'd talk to the devil like that. He might try and kill you. He'd been trying to kill me since the day I was born. <laughs> He'd been trying to kill you too. He don't like you. He, he, don't, he hates God, so you, you're as close to God as he can get. So, yeah. Whew. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You're no longer an, an ordinary hu human. He said... He judges among the gods. How long, how long are you going to let this go on? How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked, Selah? How long you put up with this? How long before you stand up and say, hey, I've had enough. I've had enough. I found out that the greater one is in me, and the greater one's risen up in me right now. I found out 
Philemon, verse 6, that my faith is effective when I begin to acknowledge every good thing that is in me in Christ. When I begin to acknowledge every good thing that is in me in Christ, my faith will be effective. Hallelujah. Effective faith. Not and, Come on. He said, your job, look, defend the poor and the fatherless and do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. You can't deliver the poor if you're poor yourself. He said, I made you priests and kings. Come on. Peter 2 9, 2 Peter 2 9 says, You're priests and kings unto your God. A royal priesthood, a chosen generation to show forth the complaints of him, to show forth the praises of him that's called you out of darkness and into this glorious light. Why are you hiding in the dark? Well, he might see something I did wrong. I promise you, he will. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. He might see me. No, th that's why we love him, because he knows everything about us and calls us his beloved. I, I'm so happy that he knows everything about me. I'm so happy about that. Nancy's not so happy that she knows everything about me sometimes, but God is. <laughs> I said, Nancy, you've been praying that prayer over me for years, but I think you pray it too fast. God's not figuring it out. So, <laughs> thank God for thank God for praying couples, right? Amen. He said, "Deliver the poor and the needy, and rid them out of the hand. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They don't even know. They don't even understand. They walk in darkness." And all the, face, all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Why? Because we're not in sync. That's, this, this year, all we need to do is get in sync with God. That's it. Nothing religious. I'm not going to try to do this. I'm not going to try to do that. No, I'm just flow. It's like Ezekiel when you read the story about the, the, the anointing, the river coming out of the throne. He's up to his ankles, he's up to his knees, up to his waist, and finally... Finally, he can't touch anymore. He's in the flow. God doesn't want you touching. He wants you to flow. He wants you to flow. Say, hey, flow. I have said you are gods. Look at this. This is God talking now. I have said you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Now, who said this? Who did he say it to? See, light never has to struggle with darkness. The lost are in the dark. You're the light. Just make sure you're not a flashlight. And we need to know how to witness to people too. You know, I was I was thinking about Darren back there doing sound, and he's one of us, and we should be able to go wherever he's playing around the city and, and know what his schedule is and go out and hear him. But this is what we need to do. Like with the tribe of Judah, oh, you wouldn't believe some of the things we saw in some of the places we went. We'd go where the, where the bikers were hanging out, and we'd go there and, and hang with them. We, we didn't drink with them or anything, but, you, you know, sometimes we'd actually pour, pour drinks for them, carry their booze into the clubhouse for them. You did what? Yeah. Yeah, just like Jesus. <laughs> But then the other people that showed up, the religious ones, I'm not kidding. I watched this time and time again. They'd go over and sit in a corner by themselves and open up their Bible, thinking that was a witness. I'll just sit here and act holy. <laughs> They're bound to see it. <laughs> you know, I don't mean to be critical, but they were knobs. Religious knobs. You can tell them I said that. I don't, I don't, it, it's like we would watch them and they would, it's almost like they would rain on the whole parade. Instead of making relationships and sharing with people, getting to know people, finding out about people, when you find out about people, you find out that they hurt just like you. They bleed just like you. They may have the big front on, just like many people do how you project yourself. You project yourself as big because you inside you feel so inferior and so small. 
That's most of the world out there today. They're, what they're looking for, the reason why they're going to movies, why, the reason why they're watching TV and something, they're looking for a better life and don't know how to get there. Yeah. Right. A re- that's it. They're looking for something that's genuine. And they can tell. You know, one, I remember this one biker, he, and you got to know this when you go to the outlaw clubs, this happened in Texas. We behaved ourselves and, and did what we were supposed to do, and, and we had them together praying and all that. This one guy, he got in there and decided he was going to hit up on the girls. And they took him out and they beat him close to death. Why? Because he hit up on the girls? No. Girls to them are just a, a, just a, a, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? A commodity? No, they beat them up because they didn't, they didn't stand for what they said they were. They, he, they beat him up because he said he was a Christian and wore a Christian biker patch, but he was in there living like them. So you're there with them and you're loving on them. You're just not participating you're there, and you're not there to preach to them and to raise them up higher. You're there to listen. You're there to listen. When you listen, you get great opportunities. Again, you don't shine a flashlight. You know, Jesus, <laughs> blind them. It's time for Pharaoh to submit. Amen. He said, I've said you're children of the Most High, but you'll die You'll die like men and fall like one of the princes. He said, you've got to believe the supernatural to receive the supernatural. Arise, O oh God, and judge the earth. Arise and judge your pharaohs. Run the pharaohs off. Let's, let's close this with Ephesians 2, 6, and then I think we're going to get protected. If you wonder why I'm sitting down today, because I wanted to. I'm healed and I'm made whole. There's nothing wrong with me. My confession is, yeah, I'm doing well, so well, it's not fair to you. Amen. Well, you don't look like it. Well, then you're not walking by faith. Right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so I said, I thought up. I thought coming in here and standing up. Anyway, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll leave that alone. Ephesians chapter two. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's what we need to be sitting down because that's Ephesians two, six. Yep, you're seated. That's Galatians, Gary. Try one more, okay. He re- no, now this notice it's past tense. You're already in the place of royal priesthood, chosen generation. You're already Revelation one, five, and six, priests and kings unto your God. You're already that. All you need to do is take your seat, because when you take your seat. You're seated in authority. And you're not praying to heaven. You're speaking from heaven. You're praying from heaven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. Glory. laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> seated. Take your seat in heavenly places yeah. in Christ. Just please take your seat. You all be seated. You know, the Knights of the Round Table. The reason why it's round is nobody's any better than anybody else. <laughs> the preacher's just the mouthpiece. <laughs> or the ass that carried the word into the city. I like that myself. I thought, it's hard to think highly of yourself when you realize you're the ass that brought the word <laughs> into the province. <laughs> it takes a load of pressure off, too. <laughs> I couldn't help myself from an ass. <laughs> I'm not talking myself down either. I, I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ. But I know who, whom I have, whom I believed. And, and that's what Paul the Apostle said, I know whom I've believed in. And I am persuaded. 
that he's powerful. He's powerful to keep what I've committed unto him against that day. I'm persuaded. Are you persuaded? Fully persuaded means you're beyond a shadow of a doubt. And if you're not fully, fully persuaded, just meditate the word until you are. We hope this message has encouraged you in your relationship with the Lord. For more information and ministry resources, we invite you to visit our website at www.newcovenantchurch.ca. We look forward to you joining us next time as we continue to live victoriously.